Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. We've got a lot of news today, and I have to thank Will Spirit Radio and Revolution Radio Studio A. Good morning, everybody, and Turtle Island News info for being with me today. You know, I've been thinking about some of the stuff going on right now, and I realize how wars start because first of all let's talk about me because I am so pissed off right now and you're probably thinking what is pissing you off Tracy well I'm going to tell you so Two Dog and I for a good six years now at least I think I think six anyway we could say that easily have been doing shows and telling people what's going on with the native peoples all over the world. Started some people off that are traveling all over the world doing this good work. So I get a a call and an email today. Six Nations um, news site has decided they're the only people on this planet that can use Turtle Island News. So I'm thinking you see, this, this is a direct example on how war start. Because I was about to call somebody to go down there. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look in today to changing the name of our page, our web page. It'll still be located at the exact same place and I'll show everyone how to get there but there's always people trying to do a good thing I think I think we know that as much as we're hearing horrible stuff I am not going to go into the grief shaming that's going on right now because we know what's behind these world attacks and with the most outrageously massively coordinated false flag ritual ever we have so much going on on this planet right now horrible things Canadian mine industry right now is being destroyed by riots in Mozambique because we stole their land And we are raping the shit out of it right now, as Canadian mine industry is doing. Now realize, and I've, I've put some articles up on the page that you might find interesting today. We have a really good article sent to me by our wizard, the wizard on staff, 300 Spartans. We'll go in step by step, detail by detail, how this is such crap. But first, I want to take you back in time. February 15th, 1787. A young nurse at um, Lancashire Cotton Mill decided to scare one of her co-workers with a mouse. The prank actually made medical history terrified of the rodent, the woman on receiving and had a fit that lasted for hours. The next day, three more workers suffered violent fits. The next day after, six more. Alarmed, mystified at this epidemic, owners closed the mill amid rumors of a disease brought on by contaminated cotton. A Dr. William St. Clair arrived at Preston to investigate. He found 24 people affected. Three worked at another factory five miles down the road. He ended the epidemic. It was merely nervous, easily cured, not induced by the cotton, he concluded. 
suitably reassured, all recovered, no more workers fell ill. On a Wednesday, more than two centuries later, and 65 miles up the A-59 from Lancashire, 40 pupils at the Outwood Academy in Ripon had treatment for dizziness and nausea after four fainted in an Armistice Day service. Fire Brigade Specialist dispatched to the incident found no signs of any hazardous materials, but the assembly hall was a little warm. A David Winspear of North Yorkshire Fire Service suspects that a handful of children fainted, with the rest developing symptoms driven by anxiety that rippled through the school. One student talked of a domino effect. Like Lancashire Mill incident, the events at Outward Academy bear hallmarks of what was once called mass hysteria, but which is now called mass um, psychogenic illness, MPI, in case you're wondering. Doctors have recorded cases of hun for hundreds of years, and fresh incidents crop up around the world almost any week throughout the year. Incredibly common. Happens to completely normal people, said as Simon Wil Winsley at the Institute of Psychiatry at King's College London, who wrote his first paper on the subject, 1987, gatherings on hot days of people who know each other well, marching bands, cheerleaders, school groups, particularly prone. It may be that someone faints or has a fit or medical incident, and what gets transmitted is anxiety. People get anxious because they don't quite know what it is. The thing about anxiety is that it gives you symptoms. You feel frightened. You shake. You get a dry mouth. You get butterflies in your stomach. You might get chest pain. The next thing you know, you're keeled over. Past cases of this MPI reveal women are more likely to be affected than men. It often starts with one individual. People are more affected if the first to fall is someone they know well, or if that person has a high status in a, in a group. A spate of cases in the U.S. that we have talked about before have seen cheerleaders faint, send others quickly to the floor. Schools particularly vulnerable. One of the most potent environmental triggers is smell. So anxiety can be heightened if someone posts rumors of a gas leak on, say, oh, I don't know, Facebook. As happened during the Outwood Academy faintings. Remember that? Now, not all episodes of MPI are benign or easily resolved. Complex cases occur when stress builds up and becomes chronic in a population. In these instances, the effects can be explosive. In regions where people live in fear of being gassed or bombed with nerve agents, struck down by witchcraft, mass psychogenic events can occur. Hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions of people at a time. They can suffer muscular tics, twitching, shaking for weeks, even months. These things become huge when the rumor explanation is both dangerous and credible. Evidence is plentiful from the West Bank to Kosovo to South Africa to Afghanistan. 2012, for instance, 
Takir province in Afghanistan was alerted to what was feared to be a mass poisoning of girls. At a school in the Talukan district, someone reported a smell. Then everyone got dizzy, nauseous, weak. Doctors found no organic cause. Who put it down to MPI? Said it was the fourth that happened in the same year, in the same place. The girls feared the Taliban would poison them. I know it sounds unrelated to what's going on, but bear with me. For all the doctors know about MPI, one big uncertainty is how to handle the aftermath. In June, later that year, Saudi authorities moved girls out of their school and into a building after fears of being haunted led them to suffer fits and convulsions. Bowing to parental pressure, did they solve this problem? 1999, school children in Belgium reported falling ill after drinking Coke, Coca-Cola. A company suspected MPI, diagnosis later confirmed, but recalled the product anyway at a cost of $250 million for fear of losing market share. In Ripon, fire services, school authorities seem to have handled the event well, mishandled an incident that could be brief, harmless, and which affects normal healthy people can leave a small number with chronic illness. They will suffer from this for the rest of their life person who falls ill because of fear of an invisible gas rather than from a direct exposure is still ill. I am not fluffing this off. It's still an illness. But some who have their illness dismissed as all in the mind can struggle to rid themselves of symptoms. They might embrace explanations suspect a cover-up, and faced with having to prove they are ill, fail to get well still. The challenge for emergency services, schools, public health officials, is how to get the balance right. They must investigate gas leaks, hazardous chemicals, need to be ruled out. But writing in the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine, a social scientist in New Zealand. It said that this must be done in an atmosphere that allows fear to subside, anxiety to dissipate. The job is much harder now than it was in the 1700s. Bringing calm to a school or community or to the world is far more difficult may be impossible because now social media can spread anxiety further than line of sight. Do you remember when a girl, a group of girls developed facial tics in a high school in New York 2011? Some doctors wondered whether the bizarre movement might have been spread by YouTube videos that the victims had posted. And as soon as media coverage stopped, they immediately began to recover. We used to talk about witchcraft. Call in a priest to exercise demons. A tough task. But now our task is much, much harder. You with me? In Canada, in the last couple days, a Muslim woman was attacked outside of her child's school in Toronto, had her burqa ripped off. 
was beaten. In Kitchener, Ontario, a Hindu temple had its window smashed by vandals, vandals yesterday. In Peterborough, there was a Sikh temple burnt to the ground. Now, people all over the world, and there are incidents like this all over the world, because of fear, because of terror. But please remember, and I know that the people listening to me already know this, it's why I wasn't going to go into this mess at all, because it seems obvious. But, I told you in August that from September till January 2016, there will be escalating false flags. Now, North America Grid X3 exercise scheduled for the 18th to the 19th this month. Yes, there are things happening all over the world. Chemical spills, gas leaks, mass after a massive tornado in Texas. Texas is getting nailed by one thing after another. We're being told ma another massive meteor is heading towards Earth, um, probably the 20th. This global war on terror is a global war on you. Period. That's what it is. The cop who shot and killed a seven-year-old girl who was in her bed sleeping is already back to work. We have massive animal deaths. Again, all over this planet. Massive. So, I need to remind you of a couple more things. Netanyahu told France you vote for the Palestinians to get their little strip of land you will suffer the consequences just like when Canada got SARS when we said we would not be joining the United States and their host of merry men in bombing Iraq suddenly cured when we sent troops. France suddenly has sent people to bomb Syria into the Stone Age. It's already done. And yes, I do have links to Netanyahu's saying it would be a grave mistake. I know everyone has been telling you about these things. So I want to hit it in a little different way because you're probably sick of it like I'm sick of it. We're talking about the 113 and the 144, the strike on Paris. And I have to remind you of something else. November 13th, 2001, President George W. Bush signed an executive order authorizing the creation of military tribunals for detention, the treatment and trial of certain non-citizens in war against terror. The order is one of the tactics taken by the U.S. government to combat terrorism as a result of the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and other buildings that they've totally forgot about. Again, September 11th, 2001. I told you this year would echo important years. Did I not? But in that executive order, Bush finds, given the danger 
to the security, the safety of the United States and the nature of international terrorism. And to the extent provided by and under this order, I find consistent with Section 836, Title 10, United States Code. That is not to apply in military concessions under this order, principles of law, and the rules of evidence generally recognized in the trial of criminal cases in the United States District Courts. The President further found, having fully considered the magnitude of the potential deaths, injuries, property destruction that would result from potential acts of terrorism, against the United States and the probability that such acts will occur, I have determined that an extraordinary emergency exists for national defense purposes, that this emergency consists of an urgent and compelling government interest, and that issuance of this order is necessary to meet the emergency. The order then defines individuals subject to the order as follows. Members of organizations such as Al-Qaeda, individuals who have engaged in aided or abetted acts of international terrorism, or individuals who have knowingly harbored such international terrorists. It goes on. The murder order was met with support, some criticism, but not much. Martial law is now under effect in France for three months. Idiots, and that's their um, official term, are now attacking Muslim people. Or anyone who looks because the idiots who are doing this has no idea that Sikhs and Hindus are not Muslim because they're idiots and DARPA the CIA Facebook this is about your brain being manipulated. And everyone who has posted their little flag needs to be on the lookout because most people can't identify the ones that have posted that. They couldn't pick out France on a map. They have no idea what's going on. Haven't looked into it. Don't care to. but they have been triggered. This massively coordinated false flag anniversary ritual in Paris connected to the 113 on the exact anniversary of the war on terror. This is the infamous Ides of November and massively coordinated being the key words since like 9-11, the only ones who had the type of access, funding, and means to pull this off are the controlling factors within France, United States, UK, Israeli government, mostly um, Polish, aka ISIS. So there's a far bigger tragedy than this event and the 136 plus humans who were allegedly slaughtered. The fact that nearly 7 billion humans on this planet actually have a bunch of Toyota driving Islamic terrorists in the Syrian desert known as ISIS exist or did it? Besides, has there been any real independent evidence confirming 
all or any of the events even happened as officials claim smoke and mirrors false flag hoax which I told you to look for with the usual crisis actors the media accomplices reading the same script now yes I know that the media uses stock photos it doesn't mean that person was there just like an image you can see from I think I put it up Sunday on my page of how they took a man who's Canadian who is Sikh so not Muslim changed his clothes and said he was one of the um, bombers he wasn't changed his clothes put it up fake that said I have come to the other big question was there any specific or anything specific in the November forecast that might denote or point to November 13th as a key date for a major event connected to false flag terrorism well aside from being the major anniversary of Bush signing the war on terror to further that question if you've been around me for a while you probably might remember what I've explained about the number sequence 113 or it's mirror 311 and the standing connection to events revolving around major headlines of tragedy and disaster generally involving false flag terrorism that's why I call these false flag anniversary rituals why do I say it? it's because that's exactly what they all are all of them events sanctioned created set up and manipulated by the sick psychopathic skull and bone head mafia the new world order controlling manipulating our world right now all up in your face who are at a deeper level are really just puppets themselves of a certain group the brotherhood they work for these people their religion at a fundamental level is all based on ancient knowledge technology occult rituals involving human sacrifice to their deities Isis or the dollar sign Osiris Horus which predate those of any Greco-Roman Empire now so hidden I call connections to this tragedy especially in context of the 113 can be more clear at least to those who remember what I've been trying to explain for the last three years about 113 being the number of tragedy its origin and the level this group will go to to frighten you and keep you afraid and keep you hating and obviously that's worked for some it has because they're attacking women walking their kids home from school tragedy hit Argentina at and on 113 it's even important to realize these things happen to the minute over and over and over again I know the stuff that I talk about may seem bizarre you want to hear about the events look at the events
the Ides of November. Well, because there's one more little prophetic connection in this month's forecast that I can actually put in plain sight. Allegorical, perhaps, reference to the more important day, date of November. Context, ancient Rome, their calendar, which was made up. And the biggest or most important date in November associated with sacrifice and even Islam, which we can go into. Do you know the Latin name of the ninth month? November. Novem. The Ides of November. Can be chilly. Ancient Rome. Their religion. The festival of Epulum Jovis. Celebrate on the 13th of November in honor of Jupiter. The 13th or 15th days of every month are known as the Ides and are sacred to Jupiter. It's old Roman tradition basing, dating back to the lunar calendar where they would fall on a full moon. The Ides of November has a special meaning being one of two of the feasts of Jupiter and their tradition um, traditional date a sheep is sacrificed to mark this date November 4th to the 17th Pleiadian games to honor Jupiter the 13th was a great festival day the high point of the games how are the masses viewed by the New World Order. Sheep. Cattle. How many sheep were allegedly slaughtered on this Ides of November? Of November. It's insignificant compared to how many they've already slaughtered. And all those they're preparing to slaughter using the same simple mind control technique. And it is pretty simple. Why is it so important for you to understand the subject of the Hegelian dialectic? Because it is the process by which all change is accomplished in society today. More importantly, it is a tool of the globalists that they are using to manipulate the minds of the average American the average person on this planet to accept that change where they ordinarily would refuse it morally, physically, emotionally. We know better. The problem is created Anticipating in advance the reaction the population will have during a given crisis because they are testing you. We've told you this. They are testing you over and over and over again. The key word in November forecast might be in plain sight, uniquely connected to the Roman calendar which contains only one date and it connected to spectacles and theaters of sacrifice. Look at the title of the forecast. Look at how we spell it. November throughout. Act 1 Part 1 Scene 1 Part 2 Act 2 Scene 2 Rant over and over again. The exact same thing being played in front of your pace. Of course, it's a false flag. 
she had Islam please in my opinion what may be the most important question who really should blame people or hold responsible for attacks whatever fall out or resulting effects occur not to mention all the future attacks this group named ISIS is planning which anyone with one ounce of common sense and intelligence that's done their due diligence knows it's nothing more than a fictional name to hide the real terrorists the French, the US, the UK, and the Israeli government. Isn't the answer the people themselves? Because in this age of information, ignorance is now a choice, which is exactly what the occult group thrives on and uses to get away with their crimes over and over and over again. Yet here we are, once again watching the same 9-11 script play out with billions of ignorant sheeple standing in mourning lines chowing down on the same media lies the same propaganda while the real terrorists in sheep's clothing are leading you prepare for a new war on terror that intelligent humans know can never be one and will only lead to one more time so who's more insane the one leading or the one following seems that people haven't learned their lesson even after almost 15 years of non-stop violence and years of evidence Proving 14 cave dwelling Muslims with box cutters had absolutely nothing to do with the last attack blamed on Islamic terrorists. With that said, there's only one thing left to say. The sheeples always deserve what they will tolerate. The CIA, through its sword of justice, has put us in a situation because of our hearts. We are not these demonic entities. We can never be. Our hearts open. We hear someone hurt and we feel it. We do. There's nothing wrong with that nothing at all you know some laugh when I talk about this mind manipulation this possession that most are experiencing heavily poisoned heavily used by the CIA DARPA Facebook who told you it was a, a social experiment and you still believe what you read? Let's talk about the goo. Goo is made by putting a venomous snake in a bottle with a scorpion and a centipede and one, the one living has the strongest poison they fight to the death in this bottle goo is a manifestation of evil that appears worldwide and in a wide variety of toxic worms and insects these two are put into this vessel where they naturally become 
one another's prey. Gu is actually short for an ancient Chinese symbol. For an extreme pathogen, yin, the dark side of life, what we are experiencing is a massive wave of dark energy. This does not have to be a bad thing. It's one of the things that the CERN has unlocked. This is not bad. We come from the darkness. We do not have to be a, we don't have to be afraid of kings. They wear crowns. Do you know what that means? You wear a crown. What happens when you are born? The woman crowns. That's all that word means. Look at your computer. There is a master and a slave drive. Both of those drives are exactly the same. Name alone changes them. But they are the same. The worst nightmare of any human. is what we've been told is the darkness, the rottenness, the slithering vermin, the poisonous snakes, the betrayal, the black magic, the pain, the insanity. Goo, hexagram, 18, is entitled Goo for dark yin poison. Classical comments from Chinese medicine experts have remarked that this particular hexagram describes an energetic situation feeling me. Where a feeble wind cannot penetrate the dense area at the mountain's base. That's your feet. Creating a goo syndrome that does not receive air and thus becomes decayed and rotten according to the movement. This is what they make the demonic goo poison. This is an old poison. Based in Chinese medicine, this is a new poison being used and laid at your feet. Now, according to Chinese medicine, one of the most effective cures raw purple garlic. Strong. Nasty. Something equally strong. I am trying to be equally strong. Not hurt. Not make you feel bad. For you feeling bad. Empathy is the one thing that might save us. Because, you know, even with the people that are reacting violently to this, and the government sending more of our young men and women to die for this, the poison I'm giving you will cure you. Also, focusing. Now this is back to ancient Chinese. Focusing on your breathing in your admit your belly. When you breathe in and out. Visualizing lightning and thunder in your stomach and it penetrates the darkest areas. Light up the darkness. Because this is where the goo parasites and the flukes hide. And they try to regenerate why they keep doing the same things over and over and over. Lightning and thunder. Are the yang energy of the earth. The goo is the bad part of the dark matter. But it's still Matt who is also mother. That which tries to hide from the light as well. The negative energy of the jinn. Yeah, yin, sorry. Thinking um bunch of things in my head. Now the Chinese folklore a goo spirit transforms into various animals, sometimes a being. But typically a worm or caterpillar or snake or frog or dog or pig is where I was thinking gin here. Black magic practice such as manipulating energies, especially sexual ones, which unfortunately our men, 
beautiful as they are. They are being pushed towards an idea so that they will react badly, feeling they are defending, feeling that they are defending all of us. I don't blame people for being stupid. You can't. I realize the mind control going on, and it's deep. And most people are unaware. And they sit by their TV and don't realize that they're rocking back and forth and drooling out of the side of their mouth a little bit. This goo was typically used by the woo. Still used by the Freemasonic pedophile CNA. CIA, satanic occultist, to kill innocent people and to make it look natural, to commit rape, typically whatever they do to gain control over victims' body, 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 mind, and soul. Goo, the symbol, can be traced back to oracle bones until modern times and has acquired a large number of meanings connotations before discussing this to you it is necessary to introduce a related world word chong w-u-g wug chong or originally snake worm same picture pictograph, insect, bug, pest, worm, spider, amphibian, reptile, dragon, etc., denotes a Chinese folk taxidermy lacking any adequate English translation. So many translate Chang as Wug. A word kind of between worm and buck or worm it's together kind of the same thing it bridges a gap linguistically a class of animals that are repugnant to you small reptiles amphibians maybe not you particularly but you know what I mean But the script for goo is poison, berich, an ancient script for goo. Again, it still means poison or to be witch. The traditional Chinese character, simplified new character, means demonic poison or wugs inside of a container. A jar, a cup, a utensil. Early writings of this range from different oracle bone scripts to seal script characters. The oracle characters, one or two wug elements. There can no, there could be a wu, but never one wug. It's funny. You'll laugh. The Oracle Bone inscriptions list 23 occurrences of goo written with two wugs and one with four and one. The goo is always multiple characters, different kinds of bugs. It's how many bugs they've stuffed in the bottle to eat each other, see which one comes out, and that's the one they use. Probably thinking, yeah, but it's wet, Tracy. They are using these ancient things against you like they always have. Diseases of this kind, even if you survive it, infect you forever. 
it's interesting you know that there are so many different meanings for this goo poisoning from an abdominal abdominal walk ancient text a type of artificially cultured poisonous walk who became a new thing after eating so many other poisonous things a ghost of a person a convicted someone convicted of goo medicine whose severed head was impaled on a stake and later put into a, a jar an evil heat a noxious chi that harms humans a wug pest that eats grain interesting sorcery that harms humans to seduce to tempt to confuse to mislead an affair an assignment one of the 64 hexagrams it is formed from jen which means mountain and zun which means wind looking at the ancient history of this records four different goo meanings a grain that molders insanity delusion and disorder a league of beings entities closest now there was a marquis of jin who asked the help of a doctor named quinn not even trying to rhyme that's really his name and a neuro sent to see for a disease that cannot be cured because of fear now according to the saying that when women are approached the chamber disease becomes insanity if women get it and it is caused by neither spirits nor by food it is a delusion that has destroyed your mind even the one ministering to you will die it will not be the will of heaven to preserve you many women will be approached by this people contain this infection forever somebody will and some by the contagion of it have you noticed that people pick up this flag and start running with it and the stories get deeper and worse sorcery then sorcery that harms humans something that casts damaging spells when you get up and stretch your legs a little bit welcome back everyone you're listening to Turtle Island News soon to be changed to Trace Element <laughs> with Tracy your hostess today and thank you everyone for listening again thank you Revolution Radio Studio A um Turtle Island News Spirit Radio and whoever else may be simulcasting me right now. So, world leaders warn it has begun. Welcome to World War Three. Where in the hell have they been? Because from Pol Pot to ISIS, the blood has never died. In transmitting. Um, Nixon's orders for massive bombing of Cambodia. 69. Kissinger said anything that flies, everything that moves. As Barack wages his seventh war against the Muslim world since he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Remember that? 
and Francois Hollande promises a merciless attack on that ruined country, the orchestrated hysteria, and the lies make one nostalgic for Kissinger's murderous honesty. Listening to people who have been witness to human consequences of aerial savagery, including beheading of victims, their parts festooning on trees and fields. I'm not surprised by the disregard of memory and history yet again. Telling example is the rise of Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge, who had much in common with today's Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. They too were ruthless. And they began as a small sect. They too, product of an American made apocalypse, that time in Asia. Now, according to Pol Pot, his movement had consisted of fewer than 5,000 poorly armed guerrillas, uncertain of their strategy, their tactics, their loyalties, their leaders. Once Nixon and Kissinger's B 52 bombers had gone to work. As part of Operation Menu, the West's ultimate demon could not believe his luck. The Americans dropped the equivalent of five Hiroshima's on a rural Cambodia between 89 and, well, 69 and 73. They leveled village after village, turning to bomb the rubble and the corpses. The craters left giant necklaces of carnage, still visible from the air today. Terror was unimaginable. A former Khmer Rouge official described how the survivors froze up and they would wander around mute for three or four days, terrified, half crazy. People were ready to believe anything that they were told. This is what made it so easy for the Khmer Rouge to win people over. A Finnish government commission of inquiry estimated 600,000 Cambodians died in the ensuing civil war and described the bombing as a first stage in a decade of genocide. What Nixer and Kissinger began, Pol Pot, their beneficiary, completed under their bombs, Khmer Rouge grew to a formable 200,000. ISIS, similar past, similar present, by most scholarship measure, Bush and Blair's invasion of Iraq 2003 led to the deaths of at least 700,000 people in a country that had no history of jihadism. The Kurds had done territorial and political deals. The Sunni and the Shia had class and sectarian differences, but they were at peace. Intermarriage was common. Three years before the invasion, driving the length of Iraq, you could do it without fear. People were proud. Above all, they thought of themselves as Iraqis, heirs of a civilization that seemed, for them, a presence. Bush and Blair blew all this to bits. Iraq is now a nest of jihadism, Al-Qaeda, like Pol Pot's jihadist seized the opportunity to provide it by the onslaught of shock and awe or the goddess Shekinah and the civil war that followed. Rebel Syria offered even greater rewards with CIA and Gulf State rat lines of weapons, logistics, money running through Turkey. The arrival of foreign recruits inevitable. A former British ambassador Oliver Miles wrote The Cameron government seems to be 
following the example of the Tory Blair, or Tony Blair, sorry, who ignored consistent advice from the Foreign Office, MI5, MI6, that our Middle East policy, and in particular Middle East wars, had been a principal driver in the recruitment of Muslims in Britain for terrorism here. Do you think? You know, I watched, um, what's that monkey movie? <laughs> you know, the ones about the great apes. <laughs> Return to the planet of the apes. See how all wars start and how we are. Traumatized people getting a chance to fight back. Those, in those senses, there were apes or gorillas, but still, it's very easy to recruit traumatized people, and we have been trauma bonded over and over and over again. ISIS is the direct progeny of Washington, London, and Paris, who, in conspiring to destroy Iraq, Syria, Libya, all of Africa, committed an epic crime against humanity, like Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge. ISIS are the mutations of a Western state terror dispensed by banal imperial elite. Undeterred by any kind of consequences of actions, taken at a great remove in distance and in culture, their capability is unmentionable in our societies, making accomplices of those who suppress critical truth. It is 23 years since a Holocaust enveloped Iraq, immediately after the first Gulf War, when the U.S. and British hijacked the United Nations Security Council, imposed punitive sanctions on the Iraqi population, ironically reinforcing the domestic authority of Saddam Hussein. It was a medieval siege. Almost everything that sustained a modern state was, in the jargon, blocked. From chlorine, from making water, supply safe, to school pencils, parts for x-ray machines, common painkillers, drugs to combat previously unknown cancers, carried in the dust from the southern battlefield that contaminated with depleted uranium. Just before Christmas 1999, the Department of Trade and Industry in London restricted the export of vaccines meant to protect Iraqi children against diphtheria, yellow fever. Kim Howells, um, Parliamentary Undersecretary of State in the Blair government, explained why. The children's vaccines, he said, were capable of being used as weapons of mass destruction. The British government could get away with such an outrage because the media reporting of Iraq, much of it manipulated by foreign office, blamed Saddam Hussein for everything. Under a bogus humanitarian oil for food program, a hundred dollars was allotted for each Iraqi to live on for a year. This figure had to pay for an entire society's infrastructure, essential services such as power, water. Imagine the UN Assistant Secretary General Hans von Sponek said setting that pittance against the lack of clean water and the fact that the majority of sick people cannot afford treatment and the sheer trauma of getting from day to day and you glimpse a small glimpse of the nightmare make no mistake this is deliberate I have not 
in the past used the word genocide for this. But it is. No implement and to implement a policy that satisfies the definition of genocide, a deliberate policy that has effectively killed over a million individuals, children, adults. A study by the United Nations Child Fund, UNICEF, found that between 91 and 1998, the height of the blockade, there were what they called 500,000 excess deaths of Iraqi children under the age of five. American TV reporter put this to Madeleine Albright, U.S. Ambassador to United Nations, asking her, is that price worth it? She said, we think the price is worth it. They think the price is worth it. And not just Paris. Why is Be Beirut brutal? terrorism attack being ignored. I'm left wondering how people are still so easily manipulated. Seriously. The Alliance's holy war against the Islamic State, NATO's role in the recruitment of terrorists, do you wonder how terrorists are made to you? With Putin being the voice of reason through all this, naming and shaming Obama, We need to look at the roots of terror. It is imperial overdrive for power and control that we are watching. It is not new, it did not start with Paris, and I am sickened to hear and watch the events as they are occurring all over this world, especially Africa. It is our history that we in the West think we have some sort of moral superiority and technical advantage for which we in the Western world the civilized world perceives ourselves as being superior well look at us living lifestyles of comparative wealth luxury to much of this world because much of this world is already living in the apocalypse it's not coming it is here. Compared to that, of course, we are superior. What is not contained within that narrative is that our wealth has much more to do with the imperial conquest by European West, various regions, in order to extract their wealth of whatever sort. Moral superiority is nothing more than a gloss of rhetoric over the motivation to use superior military technology to subdue, to conquer, to extract wealth from other regions and other peoples. In short, the roots of terror lie within our own hands. Certainly other civilizations of past years have done the same with their own versions of moral superiority, technical advantages. The only underlines the idea that this is a human condition, with the current version apparently much more deadly than previous iterations of our collective and unrecognized heart of darkness. This is the darkness. So wherein then do the roots of terror lie? historically apart from within ourselves, generally. 
one could trace the roots of terror back to the beginning of the history they tell us, and then probably beyond into prehistory. As we are supposedly a morally technology, well, a superior society today, the roots of today's terror can all be traced back to World War I. Its imperial atrocities on all sides, followed by the demise of the Ottoman Empire. Before then, of course, is the whole colonial history concerning the conquest of this planet, the Americas, the subjugation of all indigenous populations, societies then, almost wholly European, use the same, the exact same old tactics of arguing some sort of moral superiority while utilizing brutal technologies to subjugate and destroy native people. It's why I see white people in the attacks in France. Now, that doesn't mean they're not Muslim. You look at Bosnia, you can see white people, blonde, blue-eyed Muslims. Could some of them be Muslim? Yes. Were they? Probably not. Africa dealt the same deal. And while indigenous populations were not completely obliterated, the slavery, resource extraction still ongoing, control of physical land converted and covered the entire continent, most parts of Asia, whether in British or in South Asia, or France in South Asia, with the Portuguese and Dutch scattered throughout everywhere, underwent a similar colonial pattern. And that's not to say this disease hit didn't hit Europe, because it hit you first. I see that. But World War I, as we've talked about before, and the spread of this Praetorian school system and then doctorates and all that crap. World War I. Effectively, a clash of empires trying to supersede the control of other empires for wealth and power of the rest of the world. From that war rose the divisions in the Middle East by the British and the French into outright control or spheres of influence, ranging from Sykes Pickett secret agreement throughout the League of Nations mandates the Versailles peace while it worked for some failed miserably for others not meeting the ideas of any Wilsonian rhetoric about all nationalities deciding their own futures democratically brought to you by the letters B and S and the number 33 now, because of that failure, World War II, the largest battle of the world, witnessed again a change of the imperial overlords, nothing else. Politically, financially, economically, the U.S. became dominant power control of Europe through NATO using a combination of military and financial tactics to try and gain control of the rest who were not willing to submit to U.S. dominance. The readings of history are widely available. Various interpretations with the general trend of one being an artificial moral superiority combined with powerful economic forces. Bretton Woods, World Bank, IMF, WTO, OECD, etc., and on and on. All sustained through covert and overt military actions and false flags. This is a unipolar empire. The collapse of the Soviet Union is probably the most current historical 
turning point. It left the U.S. and its partners as heir, apparent, to the global hegemony. A global peace would surely ensue. It was the end of history. Unfortunately, those same imperial imperatives from centuries past survived, thrived, and what was supposed to become the new world order? It played out militarily through the designs of the grand chessboard, rather than through the logic of an orderly trade, cultural interaction, searching for a better understanding of each other's culture, and arguably 9-11 attacks on the WTC could be labeled as more infection or an inflection point of history. But it is more readily seen as a combination of blowback from actions taken by this global imperial hegemony. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the incident released powerful forces, already prepared, ready to be set in motion. It was the New Hull Pearl Harbor, designed by the authors of the Project for a New America, or a New American Century, Roosevelt, Bolton, Pearl, Feast, Kagan. Crystal, Woosley, who had been around since Reagan's tenure. It allowed the rapid passing of the Homeland Security Act, one so large it had to be by necessity ready to go for the framework. It was prepared. It couldn't have happened in a day. It ramped up the rogue nature of the U.S. military and corporate actions globally with their infamous with us or against us paradigm, turned everything black and white, losing all perspectives of gray or color. The ultimate goal? Global hegemony, the containment, the destruction of both Russia and China, the unparalleled support of Israel the demonization of all things Islamic. It applied ruthlessly through all means of military operations, through the manipulation of internal standards, so-called right to protect doctrine, those ideas, through the manipulation of financial markets, and last but not least, the outright control of all media mainstream and its acquiescence, indeed promotion, of the new imperial rhetoric. Fortunately, we are at an inflection point once again. Not fortunate for those in, its, in the depth of its current and violence, fortunate in that the rest of the world has acted against the imperial overdrive of the U.S. and its imperial cohort. Yes, the attacks in Paris were brutal, vicious, intended to frighten you, to terrorize you even more, to traumatize you even more, to get you to put on your little freak flag on Facebook. But what of the terror that has been instigated in the name of the empire? The empire in which you and I live? It is less of a terror tactic to bomb cities, villages, countrysides, indiscriminately as in the Vietnam War. Are we more civilized now that we can pretend to use smart weapons? Is it shock and awe? a feature of technical morality making us superior to the thousands being killed daily with millions more affected by well in the subsequent years is the use of 
hyperbaric bombs, cluster munitions, white phosphorus, depleted uranium munitions, hellfire missiles, dense inert metal explosives, all used in these new civilized western powers in the wars of the Middle East and beyond. Is that being more civilized? Is the control and manipulation of the financial world a morally justifiable act? Are free trade agreements anything but free when they subjugate the junior partners both financially, legislatively, in legal terms, but essentially destroy anything close to sovereignty? Is our lifestyle predicted on consumption, living within a retailer, extractive economy, so living in debt basically, buying cheap resources and goods from countries subject to financial and military imperial overdrive? Is that how we rationalize our moral superiority? This is understood by some in the world right now. It is seldom, if ever, recognized within the mainstream media, except for the odd occasion when a balanced report accidentally slips through or is made on a situation in which there is no balance. What is being recognized slowly, without huge rhetorical counteraction, is that there is, fortunately, no longer a global or a single global hegemon, even as they remain desirous to attempt it. Putin asked the UN, Do you know what you have done? They created an empire of chaos that serves certain sectors well, but for most part, to a level of violence not witnessed for several generations that could, if the right-wing rhetoric and bluster of the U.S. presidential candidates holds any meaning, could lead to the end of the world as we know it. Freedom Fighters of Reagan have morphed through the Taliban to Al-Qaeda into the current ISIS iteration. These groups have always been supported by the U.S. Certainly the Mahajadeen from which the Taliban less so-called Al-Qaeda other than as a useful other as an exercise to combat on a global scale, yet supported by the long allies, the medieval tribal monarchy of the Saudi and their black oil, as it has been extrapolated from current actions against ISIS, who have proven to be convenient destabilizers against Assad, receiving U.S. military aid indirectly through Turkey, Saudi Arabia, other partners, the usual suspects. As for France, willing partner. In most, if not all, of these imperial endeavors, asymmetric warfare has brought these endeavors to the homeland. France could have imposed martial law, locked down the country, as more likely would happen in the United States, and looks like has happened, but kind of quieter. If Canada, well in Canada, the response so far has been measured, compassionate, decided change from what would have happened if Harper was still in power, able to ramp up on his terrorist fear factor. Fortunately, Humanity also carries within itself an altruistic caring capacity towards others. Empathy. They haven't killed it yet. Just as the roots of terror lie within our own hands, so do the roots 
of real altruistic humanitarian outlooks. That includes all humanity, indeed all of the global environment, and if nourished properly can result in an eventual reset to something more compassionate, maybe even caring. That's still possible. I expect no miracles. As the hatreds have been developed by the control of the commons politically, financially, militarily presented with this subservient media, it's not going to be easy to overcome this. What needs to be recognized is that we are all complicit, partly through the acceptance of our lifestyles and what it is truly based on. As individuals, sometimes not much can be achieved, but it becomes an individual responsibility to question authority, to question the raison de faire of our moral judgments, to be prepared to do our own searching for the truth, however painful that truth may be, Civilians in Paris may have been killed because of these imperial drives for power. Not just tens, hundreds of millions before them have been killed in the past. The human condition, its extremes of pathos and joy, requires a understanding of global responsibility towards each other and every other that exists. Take personal responsibility, think globally, act locally. Towards an ear that perhaps the world will be at peace with one another. I know it sounds impossible. But we could choose not to allow this Paris false flag operation to be a pretext for war and more racism because haven't we had enough of that how many children have to die right now going global Republicans are urging France to invoke Article 5 of the NATO Treaty. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. Who is us? It's not me. It's not you. It really isn't. It's just not about you. And it's never really been about you. If you're listening to me, <laughs> and as much as I talk about the uh, people that are listening, if I was important to them, I would never have gotten on air. And I'm, I wouldn't. It's simple. This would not have happened. I would not be talking to you. They wouldn't. They wouldn't mess with my internet connection. They would stop me from talking plain and simple. Even if I was one of the big radio hosts with hundreds of thousands of daily listeners, you don't matter because you're still talking. So crisis. Manufactured. As reported by Der Spiegel, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has accused billionaire George Soros of using his open society network to destabilize Europe by funding and encouraging an invasion of Islamic migrants into Europe. Saying this invasion is driven on one hand by people, smugglers, 
on the other hand, by those activists who support everything that weakens the nation-state. This is the Western mindset. And this activist network is perhaps the best represented it by Soros himself. Hungarians have been the loudest to complain. They have closed their borders to refugees. They don't want any resettlement in Hungary because they fear they will be Muslimized. Do you know how many Muslims are in Hungary already? You know, in fact, there are reports of rapes by Muslim men. We are only shown pictures of men, groups of men, young men, some in Germany, elsewhere, as well, that treat the Muslims as a threat. They feel compelled to abide by Sharia law, not the laws of each individual nation state. Part of the problem with the European Union is their open border policy. The respect they supposedly have to show for other people's religion. This is certainly going to increase crime in Europe and the Europeans are going to have a hard time dealing with it. Germans will ultimately take a million and the French will take a million. However, the numbers that they're taking are tiny compared to the total population of the countries. For example, German's population is about 80 million. So the way this will get financed is that the Europeans will simply have to increase their budget deficits. Since they have abandoned the previously agreed on policy to reach a balanced budget, they will deficit finance the additional financial costs. The Europeans, particularly Germans, look at this as a potential boom because they need more unskilled workers. Which is what the German economy needs. With regard to Soros' promotion of mass migration into Europe, he has an economic reason to weaken the European countries. Why? Because he short everything European. And if you're short everything like he is, short European equities, short European bonds, then obviously you have an economic interest to weaken those countries. It's not a conspiracy, it's just a business tactic. It is what anyone would do who has a vested economy and economic interest in weakening the economies of countries in which they have large short interests. That's it. That's all she wrote, kids. The big guys are playing us. Like they always do. Like they always have. And of course, too many people are buying it. Either going all Muslim Haiti and blowing shit up. Excuse my language. Or pretending that Paris is some new I don't know, rallying cry. Launching airstrikes on this Islamic state. People who have been Islamic for a long time usually aren't violent. It's the new recruits who go all cultish on this thing. It's funny because the anonymous group, anonymous, declared war on ISIS. I want to ask you, how is an anonymous activist group on CNN? How'd that happen? As the warplanes pound ISIS targets and the U.S. Special Forces ramp up operations in Syria, the war against the terrorist group may be unfolding on another far more unconventional front. This hackers group, anonymous, too, at war with ISIS. Why? Because 
they work with the same guys. They always have. You're not an activist and get on CNN. You don't. You don't. I'm sorry. Not gonna happen. So his children are being bombed all over this world. Slaughtered, really. What are we going to do? And I realize the majority of you are not people who would go out and hurt someone or beat them up or burn down a church or synagogue or any of that stuff because you were told to. Because people are doing that because they were told to. There are trigger words. One of them, surprisingly enough, is pumpkin. So anyone who goes off in the next half hour, know that you've been triggered. Think I'm kidding? Humanitarian retribution? Really? More airstrikes? Hitting stadiums and museums and, I don't know, clinics? Does that help France? Does that help you? Regardless of what the targets are, if they are hit or not, airstrikes have no legal mandate. They are in violation of international law. But it looks like the world leaders are no longer listening. They don't care about international law. What we are seeing is what I told you you'd see. Now wait for the next couple of days, especially in the United States, because there's another raid going. Of course there were raids, and of course there were drills in Paris. There was one thing after another after another that absolutely pointed to false flag. Global manhunts. Halting refugees. Why are we being shown the same picture over and over again and nobody's asking about that? Of course we're seeing the same faces. They use stock photos, guys. It doesn't mean that person was there. It means we've not seen the truth in a very, very long time. Most of, I don't know, Swedish, U.S., Canadian pension funds are linked to Brazilian lab grabs, displacement of entire peoples. This is where we stand. Will we be for our people? Or will we be against them? Do not let these lies change your heart. It's all we can do at this point because globally our entire biosphere is crumbling. Volcanic uptics. Hundreds of marine animals washing up dead. Coast of Chile. The deaths of sea lions and dolphins What do we have to see? A new trilateral Cold War, US, Russia, and China? And who just fired an unarmed missile, by the way? Oh, yeah, United States. When to show their badass by firing over their own people's heads? 
Ja, en haar paai net. Red tides again, spreading all over this planet. What do we do? Are we going to sit here and worry? Will it make a difference? At this point, really, part of me thinks, Psh, so what? So what? Of course they're going to kill people. They want you to be upset so you won't notice what's happening in your own house. ISIS proven over and over again to be armed of course with their beautiful new Toyota trucks those that kills me that absolutely kills me and hearing the rhetoric some people post on my page but I will unfriend your butt I hear that crap I do I, and I don't I'm not nice about it either just you're gone that's it disappeared. It happens once. Have we learned nothing? Because it's looking to me like we've learned nothing. Really. That's what it looks like to me. That nothing has been learned. within hours of Paris attacks. Sympathy. Outrage. I guess that these people were the right color. Shh, let's whisper it. Everyone's, why? Why aren't you posting about Paris? Because attacks in Baghdad happen every day. into my frustration Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Africa and again I don't want to trauma bash if that hurt you because you understand it but the day before the Paris suicide well, attacks, I'll say attacks Twin suicide bombers struck a southern Beirut suburb, killing at least 43 people. And on Friday, another one struck at a funeral in Iraq, killing another 21. Those attacks, too, claimed by ISIS. Reported by major media outlets, generated no interest or little outside the region. With the turmoil of recent years has made such attacks seem like a regular occurrence, like those people don't matter. Our lakes in Canada are being turned into a toxic mine dump. All over Canada are beautiful lakes. Our Prime Minister has decided to increase the number of training troops in Iraq. Ground troops. So much for that. He may be pretty, but they were only holding him back at, for the right moment. nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are being found in children's wrong lungs from doing what? Breathing in and out. But at least now some of Canada's Muslim scientists can speak. I've told you about real magic. How it's really used. They know the ones are really using this. They know 100% that if you do something bad, you must immediately do something good. But 
this war on terror, this Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, we have been so duped. This is a hegemonic project under fake counterterrorism agenda, which consists in going after anything that threatens Western civilization, we've been told. Major military and covert intelligence operations are being undertaken simultaneously right now in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, Sub-Sahara Africa, Central Asia, and the Far East. Period. It's happening. The U.S. military agenda combines both major theater operations as well as covert actions geared against destabilizing sovereign states. Under this agenda, we will never see peace. So that's what I think about that. Join me Thursday. Maybe we'll do something fun. Let's, I don't know, talk about demons or something. Okay, thanks for listening. Love you guys. Bye for now. Oh, listener supported, please help me out so I can change my name to the thing so people won't have a hissy fit. Okay, bye.